Hey, it's Tony Bruski, and this is our Week in Review. Over the weekend, taking a look back at some of the most compelling conversations and stories that we've covered for you of the last week. Brand new episodes back Monday morning, bright and early, 5 a.m. here on the podcast. This is the Hidden Killers podcast with Tony Bruski. Featuring author, psychologist, and daily contributor, Siobhan Scott. Alec Murdoch pleading guilty to this financial crimes. First time he's admitted blame in front of a judge. He took responsibility for 22 of the charges. It should be noted there's still more than 100 left. But 22 he had taken responsibility for. We'll see if that continues as the other charges are brought. And one of the things that he said of why he decided to take responsibility for it, it was to show his son responsibility. Well, I'm glad he's deciding to step up and be a dad now. How about you? Yeah, yeah. And can't imagine what it would be like to be his son buster at this point. His head just must be ready to explode. You know, in that recent interview, he said, well, he does have the traits of a psychopath. Mm-hmm. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I think we can go go beyond he has the traits of to a, he's a pretty glaring example of a psychopath. Sure. And the idea that this is going to benefit his son in some way is, you know, it's like <laughs> way too little, way too late here. But it, never short on on curiosity. It's like, what is he going to say next? We do know that telling the truth is not something that's usually in his repertoire. But it will be interesting to watch it play out nonetheless and see how his son adjusts to this over time. That's always of interest to me, too. It's like, how do people recover after mm-hmm. having such horrendous trauma and finding out that this parent is really pretty psychopathic? His son, Buster, in that interview on Fox Nation, when asked, do you believe he did it? He said that he did not believe that his father did it. And when asked why, it was because I've seen a side that no one else has. And he certainly has. He was there. He was in that house every day. And he claims that he saw the love. He saw the care. He saw, you know, a family that was not murderous, that his father was not ever exhibiting any desire to kill anyone. You know, his father certainly was a huckster in many other ways, but he he just doesn't believe that he was capable of that. Is that still a, a son trying to fathom or try to put the pieces together and square up what may have really happened here? Or is there some credence to that, that maybe there is something else that happened here and nobody knows what the hell Alec was involved in? Likely he was there at the very least, but that's a strong statement to make and coming from someone who the only person qualified to make that statement would be Buster. Right. Yeah, I think this is the thing that has made this case so incredibly bizarre for all of the country who's paying attention to it is that there's all the copious evidence from people who knew them well and family, friends, and other relatives about how Alec adored Maggie and adored Paul and was such a loving father, even though he was a, you know, a creepy businessman and ripped people off, that when it came to his family, he was never abusive. He was never violent. He's not a person who raised his fist to his wife. And often it's really sadly not that unusual to see people who kill their wives and children even, you know, we even have terms for that kind of crime. But generally, those people have a history of at least making threats or becoming belligerent or aggressive or at least emotionally abusive, you know, so so when it happens, it's not quite as shocking because somebody could look and say, "Okay, I did see his dark side. And so that has always been hard for me, particularly the way these murders were done, you know, the shotgun to the head for someone that here are all these pictures of him, you know, in the sports team and doing all these loving father things. It's a bit surreal and strange. That doesn't mean it didn't happen, Um, but it really has that strange quality to it. So I can see how Buster would struggle with how do I integrate the dad that Mm -hmm. I I felt was always loving to all of us with somebody who's truly capable of doing something so monstrous. Most of us can never imagine, you know, behaving that way. And this may be something 
that let's say we found the hidden video footage and saw Alec doing it, this may be something that Buster just can't integrate, that it's just too much for him. Mm -hmm. And it's again, it's a, a bit of a curious thing. We know Alec was there. And would he have ever been convicted without that audio recording from Paul's phone? You know, very yeah. likely not because it's such a strange thing. Yeah. But I would really love to know before I die, was anyone else present? And are yeah. there strange aspects to this case that still haven't been identified? It's it's like, you know, he was not spending all that money on Oxycontin. Yeah. You know, so where was all that money going? And then this, you know, the cousin person. Mm -hmm. Cut his who, cousin Eddie. Yeah, Cousin Eddie, you know, he does not present as a fine, upstanding man, you know. Mm -hmm. So to what extent are there still secrets? I do think that we may never know, but I do think that there's more to the story than has come out at this point. Cousin Eddie Smith made a claim on the new Netflix documentary that is out, season two of it now out, that about what happened when he allegedly shot at Alec Murdoch on that suicide slash murder attempt. Cousin Eddie now making the claim that he, Alec asked him to kill him. And then when Eddie said, well, I'm not going to do that. I do almost anything for you, but not that. And I'm paraphrasing when he said, why would you want me to kill you? Alec's response was apparently because they're going to be able to prove that I'm responsible for Maggie and Paul. I find it odd that Eddie is making this statement now. Why? Why now? I, that, I mean, I, there actually could have been far more advantageous times for him to come out and say that plea deals and things of that nature. But he's making that claim now. Not the most reputable of individuals. But what's your take on that? Yeah, you know, I, I, my impression of Cousin Eddie is pretty much the same as Alec when it comes to telling the truth is, you know, he's going to say what's self-serving at any given time. And my guess is if you interviewed him at different times on different days, you would probably get a different story every time, you know, or there would be different details brought out and it's all, what is he coming up with on that moment? Yeah, it's, it's, it's just very bizarre as always. The second you think it may be going in one direction, you hear a whole bunch of new things. A whole and, bunch of new things, and everybody's yeah. got a different story. And it is the weirdest case, I think, because of all the money and the power that this family had. And then it just is weird, you mm -hmm. know? It's really strange. I don't think anybody can wrap their head around it. Yeah, just in any direction, it's weird. This is the Hidden Killers Podcast. Want more? Start binging on all of our true crime podcasts right now through Apple Podcasts and get an ad-free experience when you sign up to be a True Crime Today Premium Plus member exclusively on Apple Podcasts. More of the Hidden Killers Podcast, dropping soon. Press subscribe now.